Hello everyone and welcome back. Coming to the next topic of the course, operating system is deadlock. This is one of the most important and very interesting topic. And in this chapter, we will cover all these topics. Let us first see what deadlock is. We can say it is a problem or a situation where two processes sharing the same resources are effectively preventing each other from accessing the resources. We can see it in this narrow bridge crossing example that where the single lane bridge can be taken as a resource and the traffic or the vehicle on the bridge can move only in one direction at a time. Here in this situation, traffic approaches from both directions and get stuck at a point. Because the bridge is narrow and there is not enough space to cross the bridge. Is there is a deadlock? We can say yes. If both the traffic do not want to turn back, then this situation is called deadlock. Here both of them wants to cross the bridge but none of them actually want to sacrifice. This situation can be resolved if one vehicle backs up, then also several cars or vehicle may be backed up. So we can say that deadlock is a situation where a set of process are blocked because each process is holding a resource and waiting for another resource acquired by some other process. We can consider another example with graph. Here we can see two resources, R1 and R2, which are representing in a rectangular box and two processes, P1 and P2 are representing in a circle. Here resources R1 is, sorry, here resource R1 is allocated to process P1. That means process P1 already has a resource R1 and P1 is requesting for another resource R2 where R2 is allocated to P2 and P2 is requesting the other resource R1. This state can be called as deadlock. So if here we came to this definition and try to understand it uh, with this scenario from the first line, we can say a process request resources. That means here in this scenario, processes, process P1 request resource or the need resources R1 and R2 both to accomplish its task. And similarly, process P2 also request or need the resource both R1 and R2 to accomplish its task. If the resource are not available at that time, the process enters a wait state. We can see here, P1 is allocated to R1 and requesting for R2. But this R2 is already allocated to P2 and is requesting for R1, which is already allocated to P1. So uh, in this system, we can see that there are two resources R1 and R2 and to process P1 and P2, where P1 holds resource R1 and P2 holds resource R2. And each needs another resources, that means P1 is holding R1 and needs R2 to accomplish its task and process P2 also holding R2 and need R1 to accomplish its task. So in this situation, until P2 release R2, P1 cannot access both R1 and R2 resources. And similarly, until P1 release R1, P2 cannot access both R1 and R2. It may happen that waiting process will never gain change state because the resources they have requested are held by other waiting processes. This situation is called a dead block. Here in this situation, both the process P1 and P2 are 
in waiting state and they cannot change their state because no one either p1 or p2 wants to sacrifice their resources that is why the situation is called a complete deadlock situation so finally we can summarize the concept that in a multi programming system a number of process competed for limited number of resources and if a resource is not available at that instance then process enter into waiting state if a process unable to change its waiting state indefinitely because the resource requested by it are held by another waiting process then the system is said to be in deadlock now i will discuss about system model a system consists of a finite number of resources to be distributed among a number of competing processes here resources are represented by r1 r2 up till rm and processes are represented by p1 p2 up till pn so these processes must require these resources to complete their task and these resources are not unlimited in our system resources are limited if we have unlimited resource then we do not have to face any deadlock in our system as the resources are limited then the system needs to follow a model here we are saying about some resources the physical resources are the cpu cycle memory space io devices and the logical resources are semaphore mutex lock and files all these are known previously each resource type consisting some number of identical instances or we can say a particular object each resource type ri has wi instance so here we need to uh, remember three things that resources are represented by r symbol processes are represented by p symbol and the instances are represented by w symbol in this entire chapter we say that every process should follow this system model now what is system model it is a three step process the first one is request the process request the resources every process will request for the resource we already know a system consists of a finite number of resources which is distributed among number of competing processes and all these process must request a resource before using it number 2 is use the process can operate on the resource if the request is granted then process will use the resource if the resource is being used by another process then the requesting process must wait until it can acquire the resource otherwise if a process already gets its desire uh, already gets its desired resource then it can operate on their resources and the third point is release the processes release the resource that means process must release the resource after using it it is not like that a process can hold a resource for a infinite amount of time or for time pass purpose so it is a three step model which will have to be followed by each process that is a process have to request for a resource to operating system if operating system gives the resource to the process then it will use the resource and at the end after using it must release the resource i also want to mention something that a process may request as many resources as it requires but obviously the number of resources requested by a particular process may not exceed the total number of resources available in the system for example a process cannot request three printers if the system has only two necessary conditions for deadlock there are four conditions in an order for a deadlock to occur or we can say deadlock can arise if four conditions hold simultaneously in a system so these four conditions are mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait now we will discuss all of this point 
the first one is mutual exclusion at least one resource must be held in a non shareable mode only one process at a time can use a resource each process is either available or currently assigned to exactly one process so for instance over here we have resource r1 which is free and not assigned to any particular process so this is fine while in second picture this is also fine uh, where the resource is exactly allocated to one process but in order that deadlocks happen in this kind of situation that the resource cannot be shared between two process p1 and p2 the next condition for a deadlock is hold and wait process holding at least one resource is waiting to acquire additional resource held by other process that is a process holding a resource that can request an other resource in this case the resource r1 is held by process p1 and while have been r1 p1 is also requesting for another resource r2 so essentially p1 is holding r1 and is waiting for r2 which is already allocated to p2 the next condition is no preemption a resource can be released by only voluntarily by the process holding it after that process has completed its task essentially it should not be the case but resources which uh, an operating system previously granted for a particular process is forcibly taken away from that processes so that the operating system or another entity in the system cannot forcibly remove a resource which has been allocated to a particular process in a state processes should explicitly release the resource by themselves that it whenever the process wants then it should release actually the resource by itself and the fourth condition required for having deadlock is circular wait there must be a circular chain of two or more processes each of which is waiting for a resource held by the next member of the chain so we see over here that we have a circular chain and there is a wait over here because process p1 is waiting for process p2 to release resource r2 and process p2 is in turn waiting for process p1 to release the resource r1 so we have a circular wait condition here so these four conditions that is mutual exclusions hold and wait no preemption and circular wait must be present in the system in an order that deadlock could occur or we can say all four conditions must hold on a must hold for a deadlock to occur we can say it in other way that if one of them is not present in a system no deadlock will arise in that system thank you